three men with three microphones and one awesome podcast. Welcome to the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. Right, okay, welcome to this week's Trailer Music Composer Podcast. Uh, as, as I mentioned in the last episode, I do have something quite exciting to reveal today. Uh, and that thing, whether you've been listening to the intro, is that I am not the only person with a microphone today. Uh, and not just that I have one guest, and not that I have two guests, but I have two co-hosts, which is very, very exciting for me. So I would like to officially welcome my semi-regular, not regular, once every once once in a while when they're not too busy because they're very very busy and demand chaps uh cody Steele, kieran birch to so join me on the trailer music composers podcast welcome guys hey uh, hi welcome hey <laughs> i like that you mentioned my name first too actually i thought i was a bit offended actually um, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I mean I was... technically if you went cb comes before cs so yeah yeah, I was okay. going to say it was Cody, alphabetical, so. but alphabetical. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I couldn't think that fast, guys. Sorry. Uh, I was okay. reading. I, I was funny. reading like a comic in reverse on my screen. I went to the bottom first and then up to the left. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> right. So uh, yeah. So guys, uh, lovely to have you here. Uh, now, the reason, as I mentioned to you before, and I'm just speaking to the audience here, the reason I've got you guys on, not just because you're legends uh, and awesome fun too, um, is because I thought it, it would be nice to have some. A change up from my solo band, solo band. So when I talk to myself in the woods, uh, which is hilarious, obviously. Uh, I but, think it's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> well, I find it hilarious anyway. Uh, so this week, this is this is the first week of of the, of the of the banter show. I think I should probably just call it the banter show. I've been calling it that from from now on. So of the of the trailer music banter show, uh, we are going to be getting nerdy. Okay, so. One of the things I get asked about a lot, guys, I, audience, I want you to know these guys are pulling faces at me right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's get nerdy. Uh, no. Let's get nerdy. <laughs> uh, everyone likes to know what everyone's getting. That's why I always ask when I have a guest on the show, I, I always ask, you know, what's what's your setup? You know, what, what plugins are you using? What software are you using? Uh, but we're going to change up a little bit. Uh, now, these guys haven't prepared for this, so they're looking a little bit nervous. Uh, but I would like to know. Oh, hello, my, my four year old's just walked in. <laughs> uh, the STEM assistant. Yes. STEM he, assistant one. He's, he's come to deliver me some STEMs. Um, right on cue. <laughs> right, right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back in a second. I want to talk new gear. Uh, and I don't mean outboard gear because you guys should know. Uh, well, uh, it's everyone should know that I generally don't buy outboard gear. In fact, I don't have any outboard gear, uh, you know, with regard to air quotes outboard gear uh but with regard to interesting stuff that we can buy basically new toys uh so i'm going to give you guys a moment to think about this because like i think this is actually one of the really most interesting parts of my job where you get to play with new toys that that you play an old sound through and go oh this is exciting so for instance i just bought um uh, a sample not a sample library a, a, like a vocal synth from plogue where you can when you can r write in the samples and then play it on your keyboard and it's just like daft punk it's amazing so no vocoder involved here they've done all the, okay. the hard work for you it's awesome so i was just going bigger faster stronger of you <laughs> That's yeah. much, i did that for about 20 minutes so you just so. speak into it and eat like a like a vocoder and it just you don't speak into it you just type so you just oh. type the words um ah. we'll put the the link for it in the show notes I, I i'm terrible with names this is the other thing it's some kind of vocal synth uh <laughs> but yeah it's so you just type the sentences and when you play the note it sounds the first syllable and then when you release the key it sounds the end of the end of the word so or at least the next syllable or it, it, it's very clever <laughs> uh, and it was super super fun the only reason i'm, I'm mentioning this is because i've been doing a lot of synth wave just for fun I saw your 80s, uh, was it, no, was it, was it 80s synthwave? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, un under the moniker Zach Rivers, which is, uh, I saw, <laughs> I was trying to remember the name, I was like, what was the name? 
Yeah. Tell us the story behind that, Richard. Zach, well, Zach Rivers, that was the 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 name we were going to give my son, uh, but we switched it. Uh, we were going to call him Zachary Rivers. And Rivers is obviously after the lead singer of Weezer, uh, Rivers. I was forget to say Rivers name. Cuomo. Um, and I just thought Zach Rivers was just a wicked, wicked name. And Zach Rivers is like a, a kind of a moniker of like this. Uh, he's kind of a cybernetic man born into the 80s. Uh, and he, he communicates only through vocal synths and <laughs> uh, and and it basically like I'm, I'm imagining some kind of like cheesy 80s film where this this cybernetic man falls in love with his with his soulmate and all of his songs are like love songs essentially uh not like cheesy love songs cool love songs you know oh yes, yes. Sh shades on synth wave jackets, love songs yeah. uh, manly love songs yeah exactly yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He's a go well in like so he, he's in the cyberpunk 2077 universe. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, given the propensity at the moment, especially in trendy music as well, for like 80s synth sounds, I just, I've just, yeah, I've just been having a lot of fun. And Logic has so many cool analog synth sounds that are just in the box. I don't delve as much as I should into Logic. I don't know about you, That's Cody. Can... Do you? You know, it, it's one of those things you got to you got it there already in, in your system. So I tend to like buy more and more stuff that I yeah. add to it when there's, like you said, there's a lot of stuff already in the box that I probably should delve more into. Like I only started using the sampler the other day, the quick sampler in Logic. Like Richard's pretty gonna look at me going, oh, you monster. I no, use I that every day, I, I use it in my sleep. I haven't done the update. I'm not even there yet. <laughs> oh, wow. You're not. Oh, you're still on the old one. I'm no, still on the old still one. On nine. It's because my 2010 beast of a Mac Pro is on its very last legs, and I'm terrified to do anything just in case it coughs and dies. Just, oh, if you updated it, it would just explode. In fact, uh, hold on. In this Ooh. box is the dustbin Mac I bought to replace it, Ooh. but it hasn't, I haven't unpacked it. <laughs> because <laughs> i'm just like there's too much work there but you know there's not it, too much work they're, 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 that's a week off work you know that's you just keep your computer running and in the spare time that you have which i'm sure you have plenty with all your kids <laughs> and all your side projects you just dibble dabble and you get it done you know it's lickety split you could be working no on something on your computer that still works while you have like omnisphere installing on the other one or Yes. Or something. Very you smart. can get through it yeah. probably. If you spent like a whole day doing it, honestly, you could probably get most of it done. Mm -hmm. uh, like a whole entire day. Or if you did it kind of like in and out of working on your other computer, you know, you could probably get it done in a few days. So Maybe. this is Richard this is, panics now. But this is yeah, this you guys make it sound delightful. I almost feel mm -hmm. like I should have a pina colada while I'm doing this. You know? <laughs> or an Just, I've had to I've had to like <laughs> wipe and reinstall my computers so many times that yeah. it, it yeah. is pretty easy now because I've done it so many times. But if I hadn't done it in 10 years i you know forgot the process then yeah i can understand how it would be kind of daunting it is scary i remember i think i i wiped my computer a few months ago um just because there were so many glitches in logic and um the os wouldn't reinstall so i had this blank computer with no operating system no nothing and the whole point of mac is it's supposed to download it from the internet if it's you know if you have nothing there and it wouldn't right, it wouldn't work covering yeah, the recovery mode, and it just wouldn't work. And it took me about four or five days to get it back up and running. So, um, you were if Richard, if you were doing it, keep your other computer running, and then get everything set up. It's nice to have two computers. I I, I imagine so. Uh, <laughs> I just mm. you know, yeah, I know. I I it's it's one of the, I'm always like, guys, don't be scared to do stuff. You know, you should just dive in the deep end. <laughs> Unless it's technical, then don't do it. <laughs> right, this is going to ruin your workflow. Yeah. No. So you're still on Logic Nine, you said? Uh, yeah, probably Logic Five. No, I am Logic Ten, <laughs> but I don't Magic. have. I, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I don't have the quick sampler because that was the most recent update, Logic Ten, wasn't it? The the dragon. Yeah, drops. you just drag and drop. Um, very cool. Unless I have it and I just didn't know it. Yeah, I mean, I found it by accident, so. <laughs> it was uh, I, I I recorded spoons, and um, I wanted to do something with the spoons, and so I was like, oh, let's see how we can do this, and so I put them into the quick sample. Were you like so, 
I like rusty spoons. I like the rusty spoons. used to freak me out so much. What was that called? Like <laughs> salad, salad fingers. fingers. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Ooh, uh. I think it was the Boards of Canada music that made it extra specially creepy. Oh, I, you know? No, I, I blocked that from my memory now. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have managed to duck away from the question beautifully, by the way. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, no, no, I like it. I like it. Uh, so uh, now you've had some time to think and, and chat. Uh, mm -hmm. What is your new favourite toy right now to play? Uh, you know, music toy, guys. Just Music toy. I like, obviously uh, spoons use, is your answer, Kieran. Mm, <laughs> spoons, yeah. Uh, something I use quite a lot just for like messing with sounds. Um, like say I record something or even if I just take a sample from one place and want to kind of try and do something weird with it to make it into something different, unique, create a signature kind of thing or something. Um, I, uh, I've been using a couple of those output plugins, um, Portal and, and Thermal. Um, oh, cool. Uh, are some... But they have another one too, Movement, which I've, that one's a little bit older and I have it too. Um, but more recently, or within the past couple of years, you know, Portal and Thermal um, came about and you can do some really weird kind of off the wall stuff with it. Just kind of throw it in there, play around some presets and you could take one sound that maybe is a sound you'd expect it to sound like, you know, like the, the sound of, you know, dropping a water bottle on the floor or something. And then you run it through that and it sounds like, you know, you can really mess with it and make it do something cool and unique. Um, otherworldly and, and what have you so yeah it's definitely a fun tool to play around with um so that's one thing i can think of dude i'm, just looking, here? Yeah. I'm just looking at sorry i'm just looking at the website of, i've not heard of output so this is the this is a wonderful thing i don't obviously i don't get to talk to anyone else usually <laughs> i'm just locked away we're, in my we're, room we're very isolated people yeah big right? time uh so i'm just looking at the website i've never heard about output uh, as a company uh and I, it looks like a lot of fun. There, there looks like some kind of like cosmos in on the GUI, like, which I presume is their, where you can just. Their print instruments like... are brilliant as well. Yeah, their their instruments yeah, are great. Yeah, some great instruments. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, this is exciting. I, I'm Ooh. learning new stuff. This is awesome. This this is the this thing. Is, right? This is what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> this hey, is the Richard, thing. That one that you that one you mentioned was it called Alter Ego? Is that that? Oh, that's oh. one of them. Um, one of them. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. This is the one for the. I'm like, hey guys, it doesn't matter if I can't remember it, but it does matter. It was uh, Chip Speech. Chip oh. Speech. Okay. Yeah, yeah by Plug. Yeah. Uh, vintage Speech Synthesizer. It, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm I'm not sure how I would how often I would use that in my trailer music, uh, but it's not all about trailer music. Sometimes it's just about having fun and igniting the passion. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it a little spark of inspiration often. to kind of build something off of it from there. Exactly. Yeah. Or you take something from chip speech and chuck it into the granular synth effects plugin you were talking about from output. Hello. And then mm. you can do something really wacky and create some cool signature sound that people are trying to emulate for the next year. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be the dream. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love for once to be like, as in, if you could ever get ahead of the curve where you're like, oh, wow, okay, so my sound is the sound. Great stuff. I don't need to uh, go chasing or learning or anything. Um, let everyone catch up. Just go but, do my uh, thing. Just do my thing until somebody else overtakes me again. Um, Have you ever had it when your track has been the reference track? No. Uh, it's, Have you, I, I, you had one, I think, Richard, didn't you? I've, I've had it a strange. couple of times. It's embarrassing because I've lost out on those. <laughs> like, <laughs> I haven't been able to win the briefs when I've been the when I've been the reference. Uh, so yeah, that's. If anything, that's like. A come on, sound more like this Richard Schreiber guy. Come on, you should be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just Richard Print. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so that that would be really cool though, you know, if if it was, you know, you were the you were the trendsetter where everyone's like, you know, like um uh what was it, Zach Hempsey? Yeah, did, uh, the him Inception and trailer. Good, good years, the Inception one, yeah. Yeah, who, who basically brought the Brahm to the trailer industry, yeah. essentially. Um I admit some would argue that Hans Zimmer did it and but you know, that trailer was huge. Huge, yeah. I love the way Brahms have, have evolved. Um to a stage now where they're there but they're not as heavy 
it's that, like they're not as brum, do, 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 brum. it's not as normal 2012 kind of thing um it's it's more so of it's, like a it's a companion piece as opposed to being like the center of attention like it yes was at one. exactly yeah yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you used to be like you were the guy standing up with a foghorn you know mm-hmm. <laughs> But now it's like there's there's like a demon underneath the stage that you're all stood on going. <laughs> yeah, it's more like it's just a movement piece now rather than the focal point. Yeah. So yeah. But um but yes. So Kieran, come on, what's this uh what's the what's the new toy? Toy can be uh, like as in is it a plugin that I use to create sounds? Is it like a new contact instruments can it be either of those any or i mean i've any i've said or. like a, a a vintage uh synth you know uh well not vintage synth like like a chip tune instrument essentially uh the only thing i bought recently was um that Baymouth audio nemesis i think that's by jack trammell oh uh, yeah um, Trammell's like, yeah. yeah it's it's like it is it's 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 like having trammell in a box um it's super heavy super like very uh like his sound i suppose it's i suppose it's his sound in a in a in a in a, in a library um but there's some very unique points to it like as in the, the one part i loved the most about it was there's this chromatic button and if you found find out of all say the different sounds that he has created in say signature sounds if you find one you like you click this button and it maps it out on every single key on the keyboard but they stay in time so it's not like they're time stretched or pitch stretched or whatever so if you go up and you play like c3 and you go all the way down you know c1 or whatever it is they stay at the same length which is quite cool um because that's the one thing i hate when you find a cool sound and you're like oh well i need this to be a high pitch bend and all of a sudden it's just like <laughs> it's worthless. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just started off with this. Yeah. Um, and it's also very cool when uh, libraries have them mapped out on the keyboard because we all want to be able to play in, you know, not everything is going to be in C that we write. So it um, might be A minor. It might be, or D, <laughs> which I, don't, I certainly don't write in D all the time with every single track. Um, but yeah, that's quite a cool thing um, that I bought um, because I haven't really bought anything else in a while. Um, so like CSS and CSSS were the last two string libraries that I bought. And then I kind of was like, I don't need more string libraries. Even though I've seen um, Audio Imperia brought in a new solo uh, string library, which apparently is being very well received. So... Um, I might have a look at that, even though I don't need. I sense English. a little bit of a flex in there. Kieran's like, "I'm so good, I don't need to buy anything." You know, I can just. <laughs> I'm poor, Cody. <laughs> I have a baby now. <laughs> yeah, All my money's going into a future college fund. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it was it Hans Zimmer who said uh, something about not buying sports cars and just buying instruments because it's like it, it's investing. It's the best way to invest in himself. Yeah. So you should. I like you that. Should, you should do that. I just need to buy more stuff. Yeah, that's basically it. That's how you win yeah, trailers, I, guys. Buy more instruments. Buy more things. Yeah, <laughs> not just not work on your mixing or figure out how to use it, like you know your plugins better. No, nope, just keep buying. I know there is something to be said for for like I mean I think we had this chat before. Um, the inspiration you do get from sounds, if you stick with the same sounds the whole time, you do you get pigeonholed into oh well. I have this key parse, you know, low, like obviously they're fantastic for signature sounds and bends, but after a while, unless you start manipulating them yourself or then learning how to create your own or buying the next big thing, you're kind of, you get stuck. Um, or else you sound like every other composer who's writing a track. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of a mixture of both. I think I, I'm, I'm trying to put in my own sounds, but 90% of the time I just manipulate the crap out of other sounds. And figure out that way what what would you use to manipulate it oh god <laughs> um is in the first things i go to sound toys like this, oh yeah this, just you have to um even like little alter boy little place for the little reverb um and then decapitator has to go on there somewhere um and then i suppose if you're looking to i find the um 
the waves sound pitch i think it is like that's what i use for pitching because there's a lovely lovely tone to it yeah. um, so i think it's it's nothing spectacular i mean i heard that was that paul x stretch i never used that but i've heard paul stretch yeah, yeah i've never i've never used it but i hear it's, it's very good yeah it's like a standalone um yeah it, it's ridiculous how it how far you can stretch a sound and the way it fills in the gaps it just yeah it's magic it's it's quite scary actually uh, i haven't used it for quite a while but i used to use it a lot when i was uh into kind of i was gonna say into dark atmospheres but that's still happening uh so <laughs> uh but yeah post, the, the problem with pull stretch is, is it's standalone and i you know if i can't load it in, unless someone's aware of a way to put pull stretch into logic yeah um, yeah uh, there actually is a way to do that. I've, I've used it once before. I had a custom, and um, and I needed something to stretch it way out to this weird, dreamy kind of feel. Uh, I think it was like I can't remember what it was. I think it was like a custom where they where the vocal like I was given the stems and the vocals. I had to like manipulate them and I had to like stretch them out. And, um, and I remember using Paul Stretch on it. I I don't know if I even still have it installed. Oh no, I do. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Uh, Within yeah, Logic, I got Paul Stretch, and I can load it in as a plugin in Logic. Oh my mm. goodness! Yeah, I have it up right now. This um, is... I don't remember what I did to get it in there because I didn't. I, I guess I didn't realize till right now that it wasn't a thing having it as a plugin. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think years Logic. ago, I figured. I, yeah, I, I, I went to use it, and I was like, oh, like this is years and years ago, and I was like, oh, it's not, a, it's not a plugin. Oh, I don't really want to spend the time learning how to use this, and so I just didn't. Whereas if it's actually now you can use it in logic, that'd be that'd be pretty good. See, I suppose that's why you should update software, or at least check the updates occasionally. Like, I, I, th- I suppose I've, yeah. I must have downloaded that pull stretch, oof, 10, 12 years ago. It's a long, long time ago. Yeah, maybe uh, it's been since then that they've made the ability to use it as a plugin. I'm you, you guys. I've got so many Google tabs up right now, uh, <laughs> mostly from this chat. Uh, I think it's like a freeware plugin too, right? Because I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Pre-order. so there's something you can get not even have to spend any money and maybe maybe you should add richard at the um uh either at the start or the end of this video we're not responsible for any financial hardships that we create um <laughs> oh yeah by listening to this podcast yeah i don't know uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah i i wouldn't like to see the amount of money i've spent on plugins now at this stage <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'd like to put a disclaimer in here guys if you uh any bankruptcy as a result of spending too much money on plugins uh is not our fault uh, mm-hmm. this is not financial advice there we go or at least definitely not yeah. sound sometimes financial do, advice it is true that sometimes you sometimes you got to spend money to make money so yes I just be smart about it end. buy what you need don't just buy everything that exists well here's, sure a, here's a good yeah here's a good question what did you guys have when you started landing your first trailers uh, ooh. Because um, then I suppose you know that's that leads in from that one. What, yeah. I had kind of my core orchestral stuff. Like I remember I had Cinematic Studio Strings Two. Um, I had um, Hollywood Brass, which was really my main and only brass there for quite a long time. Still a great library, even though it's considered maybe a little bit dated at this point, but it's still a fantastic library. It cuts through great. Um, and uh let's see what else did i have man um maybe some of those original like project alpha kind of stuff and uh dude you had a ton yeah i i <laughs> well i was doing this as sort of a hobby thing for a few years uh, before i was like any kind of point to where i was ready to start submitting to publishers and getting placements so i just kind of would get a little bit here and a little bit there um and then but by the time i was actually ready to start working with publishers i had pretty much everything that was like kind of the basic that you would need you know um but then of course once i started making money with it then of course i could expand upon it and start getting a little bit of everything um mm-hmm. so yeah what do you guys what about you guys I, I had i had i had a ton of cracked software uh but i didn't use it <clears throat> uh, <laughs> uh, no uh, the, actually when i first so my first trailer i landed was men in black three uh Oh, and okay. that was that was almost entirely Omnisphere. Uh, really? That was uh, that, that was Omnisphere was my f- my second author. I think Storm Drum I had, but I lost the license key when I updated my computer. I still don't have it, so I have all the samples. Just <laughs> anyway, so I have I had Storm Drum, couldn't use it. So I had Omnisphere, uh, 
and that was pretty much oh i tell a lie and i had the east west composer bundle they, that was it that was it they were like they were my orchestral sounds east west and not like the snazzy hollywood brass but like uh <clears throat> so this was symphonic 20... orchestra They're like symphonic orchestra yeah yeah, yeah, mm. yeah so this was about 2010 2011 oh, shit that was 10 years ago <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, it's mad when you think like that isn't it yeah so that was uh, yeah sym symphonic orchestra and atmosphere hmm. yeah atmosphere was another one that was one of my first ones i bought too and uh it was it was like to the point where I was, where i was like hmm should i maybe not have enough money for rent this month or should i get atmosphere <laughs> hmm. yeah and i went with atmosphere and it, it luckily everything worth worked it. out but yeah. <laughs> Thank I, I, I own like i own zebra and i have a couple of synths and i just straight away go to Omnisphere and I can create a sound within a couple of minutes. Like this is the exact sound that I want. Whereas Zebra, you're like, you click a thing and you're trying to figure out, okay, where am I going to put this? And all of a sudden you're lost. Whereas Omnisphere just seems to be the workhorse for, and I know people use Serum and there's a lot of other great synths there, but as in, it's just, for me, it's the, the synth. Yeah. Also, you can do that thing that you don't like, where you drop a sample in and map it across the keyboard, so that you go Ooh, when you drop it. Yeah, I just, I just like, I'm only starting to get into really kind of like dropping things into the into uh, samplers now. Oh, mate. You're probably like, yeah, I know. You're like, okay, I'm going to create this sample. Blah, 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 blah. Two seconds later, you've got a whole context instrument done. Yeah. Um, I just never bothered. I just didn't. I was like, no, no, no. I'll just concentrate on the music. But I'm finding now that I really want to do this, and um, because the the benefit is just so, it, it's so huge. So um, that'll be uh, something I'll be doing in the future more. But yeah, it's fun like, when you do that kind of thing. Definitely. Mm. So it's it's so it's so important. Like once you've once you've got your chops down with the structure. And understanding at least some level of orchestration and and build. Once you've got those two things down, then the thing that's the missing piece is, well, where's your stamp? Mm. You know, how do I know this is a Kieran Birch track as opposed to a Kelly Still track, as opposed to a Richard Schreiber track? How do we know? Uh, you know, there and there are things. The, the nice thing is, I can actually hear a difference between our writing. It's not like we're <laughs> we're not copying yeah, those guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, but for those of you listening, like that understanding of how to kind of create your own authentic approach and authentic sound, it doesn't have to be through sampling, does it? It can be other things. Like Kieran, you use mm. bends so much. Yeah, I love my old bends. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I do a collaborative track with Kieran, I almost feel guilty if I write a bend into it because I feel like <laughs> that should be something I just leave to Kieran to do. Oh, I love <laughs> yeah. it. You're stealing his thunder, Cody. That's, uh... I know, right? <laughs> I, I should next time. Toes, you know? Yeah, I should just have the, the email ready with all capitals. Stop stealing my bend. <laughs> <laughs> It's what I say to, to Jill, my wife, every time. It's like, fuck Cody, he's after stealing the bands. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, she took your, he took your Radiohead album again, hey? Yeah, yeah. no, fucking hell. Damn, Cody. Oh. <laughs> I just thought that it, it is funny. Like, I mean, how, how we probably all use similar instruments, similar, you know, DAWs as well. I think we all use Logic. Um, and there is a thing where, like, I don't know about you guys, um, and maybe it's, me being a bit naive but I, I don't I don't really know what my sound is but other people seem to um but as in I remember years ago somebody messaging me going hey um can you tell me how you do your your, your percussion and I didn't really think too much about my percussion but um I kind of said well like look I'm using three or four different libraries it could be damage it could be master ensemble from from Heaviosity, um, it could have been a couple of other bits. Um, and they're like, oh, I, I have those as well, but what are you doing differently? And I kind of just say, well, look, what I would do is, and I don't know about you guys, if I'm listening to music, there would be parts of somebody, uh, it could be, again, there's, there's countless amazing composers in this industry, but you'll hear something that they do and you'll be like, oh my God, how do they get that sound into their track? I remember years ago, um, do you know, it's Anton Novoselt. I can never pronounce his second name. 
Yeah, really, really slow motion. No, self -tev? Really slow motion guy. No, and no, no, self -tev? no, but self -tev, maybe? Yeah. Rushing, I'm rushing very sorry. Anton. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry, my name's I've been called Sierra on an awful lot by people, so um, I, li I like that. Sorry, Anton. That's, uh, Sierra. On Sierra. Yeah, Sierra. Um, but I heard was it uh, gender? Was it was that the Captain America Winter Soldier song? Yeah, it, it was. Um, yeah. And the percussion in that was just phenomenal. It's it's super punchy, low end with this tinny tiny cymbal metal thing it just goes at the top end and like it is just to me it's still one of the best percussion sounds out there i think uh, alex johnson and nick Rowe do very good that kind of that sound and i'm always looking for that sound listening for it it's and it's it's just so simple it's it's but it's so difficult to get it's that punch but the punch comes from obviously a kick and some sort of sub with the tiny tiny teeny little bit of the top um and so i didn't go and straight away ask them tell me how you did that i figured out okay well how do i get something like that and then created something completely different and unique from being inspired by that sound is that um, why you were playing with spoons i do like the spoons yeah <laughs> I don't, I'll tell you why I'd use the spoons. Trying to get that little spoons for it. Yeah. <laughs> I was writing a sci-fi horror track, and I, I what did I want to do? I don't know why I took the spoons out. I just took a lot of spoons and just obviously had the mic there and used them as percussion, so to be kind of creating like that kind of sound, like nearly like breaking bones, but it was more like a roll into a flat into a hit. And then obviously throw crap tons of plugins on it. Um, but yeah, so the spoons now are going to be my signature from after telling everyone what my new signature sound is. But you know, back to your back to your original point though, it's it's really there is there is something to be said for trying to figure out yourself, but mm -hmm. I also think there's something to be said for more sharing. Yeah. Uh, because like I I went into the industry like not wanting to show anything but actually like showing people exactly how i do it doesn't mean that they can then ex do exactly how i do it you know because they will still do the exact motions slightly differently mm -hmm. and that still amazes me how someone will go oh i've just done this course of yours and you know i pretty much copied you you know exactly what you were doing and they would have done something very different uh, and i love that uh, you know because actually, I think it's doing. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm not just giving myself a big head here, but I think it's doing a service. Because when I started, no one was showing anybody anything. You know, this was sort of before YouTube got big. Sort of, uh, you know, 2007, 2008, when I first started out. So you you couldn't, you didn't have that opportunity to find out. So you know, like you said, Kieran, you'd hear something and go, "Oh, that's incredible! How did they do that?" And that was all you got, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. How can I do that with with Omnisphere? You know, uh, which which probably is probably one of the reasons why I do like messing around with the sounds because, uh, you know, it's a nice, a creative way to reach this, the end point. But on the other hand, you're saving so many people so much time by showing. You know, basically what I'm going to so say, I'm 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 leading up to it. But please, guys, show me how you do your production on your drums. <laughs> <laughs> Cody's the one you want to ask. I, I I admire Cody's drums an awful lot. So oh, me too. Me too. He'll tell you. He'll tell they're you. always they're always so bright and ah, oh, and they don't seem to swamp anything. You know, yeah. It's just yeah. Cody's blushing, brother. Everyone, you know. Yeah, you, you, you can hear that <laughs> through the mic. Huh? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just a sizzle. It's a, it's a sizzle. It's a sizzle on the drums. <laughs> that That's yeah. how Cody gets his drums. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, with the drums really um there are a lot of people who use the same libraries, but like you said, what one person does will sound totally different than what someone else does. And really it's about how you layer them and, and then then also how you mix everything else with it. Cause I've I, I've even like I can write a drum, like a sequence of drum patches and have the parts written out and everything, and then take and have that in a track that I wrote, like an action hybrid track or something. And then maybe next week or whatever, I'm doing a custom where 
I want to maybe get a head start on the drums. I don't want to start from scratch. So I'll load in the same exact drums that I did before and then plan to just kind of change the rhythms, but it doesn't work at all. Like the sound doesn't cut through, the sound doesn't work. And just so copy and pasting drums from one track to the next isn't really going to do it. It's not really a matter of nailing one drum sound, but it's a matter of figuring out the drum sound that's going to work with that particular track. So yeah. I mean, you might be like, like a bass line, but rarely will it work unless you have the exact same, like even if the track's in a different key, it might change things around with the way that different frequencies are interacting um, and what have you. Um, so I've, I've noticed that like you, you, you can't just like figure out a drum sound and have that just be your end all for everything. You know, you really got to make it work on a track per track basis. Um, but it really comes, it's, it comes to, um, it, it's about coming up with the right balance of, you know, the, the, the kick, you know, the thump, the vump, the, the, uh, the snap, the crackle, the pop, you know, layering these different pieces kind of from top to bottom um, and not leaving anything out because even if you got like the biggest, meatiest, punchiest low drum without that little, that little top end plink at the very top of it to kind of give it that kick or that little punch or to allow it to just cut through the mix, you know, the whole drum could basically get swallowed up in the mix and you, you in a weird kind of illusion way, you don't even really hardly hear it. Mm -hmm. But adding in one little high pitch, you know, kind of a little snap can be all it takes for the rest of the drum to kind of perception wise come out in the mix where you can really hear it um, and feel it. Um, but a lot of it also too comes with, comes, uh, comes uh, down to what else is happening in the track. So, you know, just cause you have the best sounding drums and medias, powerful, punchy drums. Um, if you have these wall of sound kind of strings and brass and synths, especially, um, that can really just swallow it up. So um, one of the things that really improved my drums more than anything, I think, was by cutting out a lot of the low and the unnecessary frequencies from all those other instruments, you know, kind of making everything fit well together as opposed to just trying to make my drums as big and as powerful as I can. Because before you know it, you're going to be clipping through like crazy. And, you know, if you're not careful about the game staging and everything, you're going to be like really um, pushing it. So take everything else, cut out the lows of pretty much everything. Um, even on, you, you might listen to your string mix, string stem, and you might think, oh, it sounds a little thin in the bottom or a little bit thin in the lows. Um, and that may be perfectly fine for that track because you want that to be reserved for the, the drums to really cut through. Um, I'm not, I'm not a big, um, uh, uh, side chain guy. I don't, I don't like side chaining. I don't want it to, uh, create problems with, um, well, for one, it's kind of a challenge to get the stems to really work right when you're side chaining and, and what have you. And because you always have to deliver stems and these sort of things. I and mean, there are tricks to make it work. But then, you know, if they want to use the strings by themselves, then, you know, now they've got little little gaps in the sound where it kind of sucks out the sound of the strings and, and you know, clients don't want that. So I tend to avoid side chaining, even though that is a trick you can use to make the dr drums really cut through and punch through. Um but uh, I feel like I'm kind of rambling on now at this point. No, no, this <laughs> is, this no, is Carol. Golden. Yeah. yeah, this is this is like mixing yeah. masterclass. Like I, you know, if I, I wasn't my, paying uh... attention so hard, I'd be writing this down. So really, treat it. My voice is cracked like a twelve-year-old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> treat, uh, treat it like you're orchestrating uh, in a sense. You know, when you're writing out for an orchestra, you know, you got your 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 double basses, you got your cello, you got your viola, and you got your violin one, violin two, and you, you're writing from top to bottom in an SATB kind of for, format what, or, um, or what have you. You know, the drums are kind of their own orchestration in a way. You know, you've got the, the big low kicks, um, the, the taikos, the, you know, maybe like a snare or something in that snare type of range. You know, you've got the, the higher end clinks and clanks and pops and snaps and stuff that, um, that'll layer into it. So treat it like an orchestration in that sense. Um, and also in the writing perspective, part of it as well, you know, you may not have the double basses playing like the super fast rhythms, you know, maybe more like them playing quarter notes or them playing. And uh, I know you guys aren't Amer aren't American, so you may not call it quarter notes and what oh, have we you. We do. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah? Because otherwise, it's only, the, we'll, it's we'll only say... those British people. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. and the, and the, Excuse me. The could you pass me some quavers? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And that's a whole different conversation. But yeah. So like, um, so you might have like the. Uh, getting back to like writing for orchestra, you know, you may have like if you have short strings, the low double basses and cellos maybe playing, or double basses especially maybe playing like a slower rhythm every quarters or half notes. You know, if they're playing like a staccato y thing, um, and then the higher strings might be doing like the faster rhythms. You know, your your um, violin too maybe doing the 
the real fast 16th note kind of ostinato pattern. Um, and I, I'm actually air bowing right now. <laughs> I love it. As I'm, as I'm talking about it. Um, but, um, you know, so the writing for drums, it, again, kind of relates to orchestrating in that sense, because the low drums are going to be more spaced apart. You know, you may have um, quarter notes, maybe some eighth notes, but maybe more half notes and whole notes with the low big drums. Um, and then the, the, the smaller drums, maybe much more faster, um, continuous kind of running rhythm, um, which you wouldn't want to do with the low drums because it's just going to turn the whole mix to mud the moment you try to try mm -hmm. to do that. So treating drum writing and mixing and production as well, um, like it's almost an orchestra of its own, is an interesting way, I think, to treat it. And that's, that's how I think of it myself when I'm writing and working with percussion. Mm -hmm. Approach everything like four-part harmony. Right, Essentially. yeah. Yeah, that's right. pretty much it, yeah. 